Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and today I'm gonna to talk about waves. Our lives are dominated by waves. Right now you're listening to me, and so you're picking up sound waves from the speakers in your computer. Um, since you're watching me, that's electromagnetic waves. Uh, if you're listening to this on Wi-Fi, then you're using radio waves to pick up that signal. So what is a wave? A wave, if, if we define it, is simply a disturbance that moves through space and time. It's a good way to take energy or information and move it from point A to point B. So waves are really important, but there are a few properties that you need to understand about waves before you really get it. Um, first of all, you should understand that waves come in two different flavors. Uh, there's transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Transverse waves, an example of that, if you were to tie a string to a tree and then just move the string up and down, you'd be creating a transverse wave. How does that work? Well, the string would be moving up and down but the wave would actually be traveling perpendicular to that. And since this is perpendicular motion, we call that transverse wave. And this does kind of look like a T on its side, and so that's a good way to remember what a transverse wave is. A longitudinal wave, an example of that would be the sound you're listening to, it doesn't oscillate perpendicular to the motion, it actually oscillates in the direction of the motion. And so this video shows you some longitudinal waves. What's happening? Well, the oscillation is in this direction, and the motion is in this direction as well. And so that's a longitudinal wave. Uh, it could be like this in water waves, or it could be air waves as well. Um, but that's a longitudinal wave. Um, there are some properties you should understand about waves as well. And in fact, there's a relationship that's worth memorizing. And that is V equals F times lambda. Uh, what does that mean? Speed of a wave equals the frequency of the wave times the wavelength. Um, we always measure speed in meters per second. We measure frequency in hertz, which is one divided by time, or one divided by a period or second. That's called a hertz. And then wavelength is going to be measured in meters. So let me kind of go through these three properties of a wave. Um, if you're looking at wave speed, it's easier to measure wave speed when you're looking at just one wave. And so let's say, for example, that we're measuring a wave and we want to see how long it takes to move from point A, we'll say over here, to point B, which is over here. Well, let's put the wave in motion. Let me time it. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. So let's take it, say it takes three seconds to move from point A to point B, and let's say that that's three meters to make the math easy. Well, it's now moving three meters in three seconds, and so it'd have a wave speed of one meter per second. Another thing that's interesting to look in this animation is that the actual particles on the wave don't move as fast as the wave. Um, the closer you get to the surface, if you're a surfer, the faster you can move, but a lot of those particles are barely moving at all. And so the energy is being traveled through the medium, but the medium is actually not being traveled. Next thing is going to be called frequency. Frequency is how often waves come. And so the, the definition for that is one wave divided by T, which stands for the period. In other words, if we have one wave every one second, then we would call that a frequency of one hertz. So let me put this animation in run. Um, so right here we've got a, a series of lights. So the light at the bottom, it's blinking every half a second. And so its period is 0.5 seconds, and so it's one divided by 0.5, or two hertz. Let's say we have a wave that comes this often, every two seconds. So we have a wave, and then one, 1,000, two, 1,000 wave. So that would have a frequency of 0.5 hertz. In other words, the faster the waves come, the bigger the frequency is going to be the larger the frequency is going to be. And if you're listening to my voice, um, you're listening to thousands of hertz, um, if not tens of thousands of hertz in my voice. And so those waves are oscillating really, really quickly, much quicker than these flashing lights right here. Last thing in a wave is, is lambda, and what lambda is simply going to be wavelength. Wavelength, well, first let's look at this wave right here. In, in a transverse wave, it's going to have a crest, which is going to be the top. It's going to have a trough, which is right here at the bottom. And then we're going to have this node, which is right in the middle. And so from crest to crest, we call that one wavelength. And what you'll find is it's going to be the same distance from here to here or here to here. In other words, how long a wavelength is going to be lambda, or that's going to be the wavelength of a wave. Now, to really measure and play around with the waves, I would encourage you to do this. This is a simulation. It's found at phet.colorado.edu. They do some wonderful science animations, and this one's called Waves on a String. So let me go find that for a second. So here would be a wave that you can kind of play around with. Um, so what you can do is we can grab this string of beads, and I can move it up and down, and I can move 
away from this side to that side. Now what you'll find, it's hard for me to do this very well, let me try that again, is that the energy is being traveled from, or is traveling from point A to point B, but the beads aren't traveling, so it's just being transferred through that medium. So this would be a typical wave. Let me just make a quick pulse like that. So what's happening here? Well, that wave is moving down, and then it's just moving right out the door. Um, let's kind of reduce the damping for just a second and see what happens. All right, so we even have more of a wave that's moving down. Now let's actually put a fixed end on that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually send a wave down, and let's see what happens to it. Ah, the wave is being reflected, or it's bouncing back, and this is a characteristic of waves as well. Let me kind of put a damper on that for just a second. So let's see what happens when I send a wave, and then I send another wave. Well, what happens when they hit? That was kind of hard to see. Let's try that again. Let's say if I send a wave, and then I send another wave, well, what happens when they hit? Well, when they hit, they actually cancel each other out. It's hard to see. Let's see if we do it this way. Let's make a loose end now. What happens if I have a loose end and we send that down? Oh, that's cool. The wave actually comes back on the same side. So now let's send a wave and now another wave down. What happens when they hit? Well, what's happening is they're actually taking the energy of both waves when they collide, and then we're adding to that. So we have that, that's called constructive interference. So now let's kind of oscillate our waves. So let me keep the dampening like that. Let's go back to no end at the end. And now let's set it to oscillate. So now what do we have in a wave? Well, in this wave, we've got a high amplitude. So amplitude is going to refer to how big the wave is. So let's reduce that. So amplitude is how high it's moving up and down. Frequency is going to be how fast it occurs. So right now the frequency is 50 hertz. What does that mean? We have 1 divided by, what would that be? 1 divided by 0 0.02 seconds. Um, and so we're getting 50 waves per second. Um, so that's going to be a high frequency. Um, if I increase the frequency, so we're going to have more waves per second, or 50 waves per second. And if I get it really cranking, now we have 84 waves per second, or 84 hertz. What happened to the wavelength when I did that, though? So what happened to the wavelength? Well, as I increase the frequency, I decrease the wavelength. So let's go back here. What happens when I decrease the frequency? So now it's only 24 waves a second. Now the wavelength gets really, really longer. So what do we remember? Well, V, so if we go back to our equation, V which is speed, equals frequency, which is how many hertz it is, times lambda. So what does that mean? Um, if we increase the frequency, if we increase the frequency, then the wavelength is going to go down. Now a cool thing can happen if we actually add a fixed end to that we start to get constructive interference. And so what's happening now, waves that are going down are meeting waves that are coming back. And so if we increase the amplitude a little bit, we can actually get some big waves. Now let's decrease the dampening. And now we got waves that are almost standing waves or, or dancing waves at this point. If we really reduce the dampening, then this is going to get crazy out of control. Um, and so that's uh, str waves on a string, and that's a PHET. So let's go back to the keynote for just a second. And so there are a few more properties you should understand about waves. And, and the next thing is what happens when they move from one medium to another. So there are essentially three things that can happen, uh, four, but let's just talk about these three. It could be absorbed as well by the material. Um, but first is reflection. So what happens with a reflected wave? In this case, we're using laser, which is coherent light. So we have light moving in this direction, which is a wave. Uh, it hits a surface that's reflected, and we get a reflected wave. And this, this reflect angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. Um, so the waves are simply bouncing off of it. So when you're looking at a mirror, those would be reflected waves that are coming back to you. Now another thing that can happen when it hits, moves from one medium to another, in this case we're going from air, it looks like, to a, a lens, or this could be filled with water. It's being refracted. What does that mean? It's being bent. And so as the light moves in this direction, it's a wave. It hits this, and it's actually slowing down, and that's bending or refracting the wave. Now you can also see here that some of that is being reflected, but we certainly have a lot of refraction here, or bending of a wave. And then the last thing that occurs is something called diffraction. When you move waves through a small opening, 
the waves will actually bend. Um, and that's called diffraction. So they're bending through this opening or they could be bending around the bend as well. So let's say you're listening to music and you're right over here. That sound wave is actually going to bend around so you can hear it. Now, which waves are you going to hear bend more easily? Well, the high frequency waves, so the high pitches will actually move right through, but the low frequency will actually bend more quickly. And so that's why when you hear a car coming by and they're listening to really loud music, you'll hear that you hear that low frequency sound because it's diffracted more readily to get out of the car. Um, but the high pitches or the, the, the higher frequency noises, they don't get diffracted as much so you don't hear them. Last thing I want to show you is that you can solve simple problems. And so let's say this is a, a real world example. Let's say we have a tsunami, which is a giant wave in the ocean created by an earthquake. Let's say it has a wavelength of 21, 210,000 meters. So that's 210 kilometers between waves. That's a huge wavelength. And let's say it has a frequency of 0 0.00067 hertz. That would be like one wave coming every 25 minutes. Now calculate the speed of the wave. Well, how would you do that? Well, we remember our equation V, which is wave speed, equals frequency times wavelength. We have to look at our units, so we know frequency, and it's in hertz, and so we're fine. We know wavelength, and that's going to be in... Um, meters and so we're fine. So to figure out the, the wave speed we simply multiply the frequency times the wave's length to figure out the wave speed. And I did this earlier when you take 210,000 times 0 0.00067 what you get is uh, 140 if we do significant digits right because the uh, both of those have two significant digits 140 meters per second. Now most of us don't understand what meters per second are, so we can roughly take that times 2.2. And so a tsunami that has that large a wavelength and that small a frequency is going to move at about 310 miles an hour. And so these things move really, really quickly, and that's why it's important that we know and get, high, get to higher ground when we hear the tsunami warnings going. And so that's waves, and I hope that's helpful.